back. It's, 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 it's Big French right there. It's Deuce Ellis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's DJ Beans. Listen, Mikey, this is thing one right now, right? So what is this? What is, I, it looks like I, I put the, in the notes five-year-old whoops on teacher. Yep. All right, can you read the story? Yeah. An elementary school teacher was left weak and dazed and had to be taken to a hospital for treatment after an attack by a five-year-old student, reports say. The child will not face charges because cops say it would be difficult to show the five-year-old has the ability to distinguish between right from wrong. The attack occurred after the five-year-old and another four-year-old student began throwing things and flipping over chairs in a classroom. Five and four, flipping over chairs in a classroom. Yep. The four-year-old was removed from the classroom and was taken away to an empty cool-down room. A cool-down room. Now, did he cool down? Continue, Mikey. It was there the student then attacked the teacher, hitting her with hands, fists, and feet. The teacher managed to get on a radio and call for help. The student she reported... She had to call for help? <laughs> oh, on, to man, the wait, wait, wait. He's not, there. He's not over. Go ahead, Mikey. After she was on the floor and unresponsive. <laughs> The victim is in her late 30s or early 40s with a slender frame and about five foot four. She's white. Yep. The student is estimated to weigh between 50 and 60 pounds. A police report shows an officer found the teacher sitting on the ground against a wall in a faint state. Slump. That's yep. called slump. Yeah. The report <laughs> says the teacher began coughing and dry heaving and was unable to respond to emergency workers' questions. <laughs> She was taken to Memorial Regional Hospital for treatment. The teacher's injuries were so severe that she had to be intubated at the hospital and reportedly will need surgery. Okay, that's it. Don't read the rest All of this, right. right? Listen, what's the wildest thing you ever saw, French? I'm going to go to you. What's the wildest thing you ever saw happen in school when you was coming up? Well, I got kicked out of um, my freshman year of high school because they said I started a riot. Did you start a riot? I, I I did I did I did throw the first punch because hey. that's what it boiled down to, you know who threw the first punch, you know because one of those things I was a I was a freshman, in you know on on a high, uh, football team, <clears throat> I'm walking through the halls, you know guy bumped me, he he says the n word I jaw him, I hit him his man hit me my boy hit him and it's like you know. Then it was, the, you know, the blacks against the whites at that point. Wow. Oh, you started a racial war, right? <laughs> and then, then it boiled down to who threw the first punch? Frenchie. Se right. Seems, seems like the dude that, seems like the idiot that called him a nigga was the one that started this riot. But, of, that course, that. but of course, yeah. you know, he had, the, he had the skin color that, you know, gets away with shit. Beans, what would happen if you was a teacher and a five-year-old started swinging on you? I'm gonna sit on that kid, and then I'll call somebody. <laughs> you sit on him? Yeah, yeah. You can't really put your hands on a kid, right? So, oh, the kid's fifty pounds. You can't put your hands on a kid, but if a kid is swinging at you, I'm gonna restrain him. A fifty pound kid that's doing all this work. I mean, right, because well, his she's, thing. she she's Damn. free enough to call for help, right? So there's that a part, there's to me a part like of the that story was some, we didn't get to yet about yeah. this kid. Okay, special needs. Right, which means has different kind of strength. Right. And that's all we can say. It's a different kind of strength. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say but what it is. When I when yeah. I was young, yeah, they call that shit re strength. Right. You yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now yeah. so I mean, I don't know what the politically correct word for re but that mentally ill strength. Right. <laughs> that's, that's listen, listen. That, that's, that's, that's the special check. That special check at the end of the month trim. Yeah, that that yellow bus. Short sure, yellow bus trim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crayon, the crayon eating, you no know, window licking, helmet wearing. <laughs> he said, "I told you to cr cut the crust off of my." <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that bitch. Yo, bitch. What, I, what was the phone call like? Like when she was calling for help. I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> like, like, hey, quick. I didn't need to know karate. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what kind of surgery do she need? Like, 
That's you know, what I'm about. Like, you need surgery behind an ass woman from a five year old? That shit sounds. Right. Like, you know, if you her family, do you clown her? Huh? Like, like after, if you her family, like, do you roast her, like, at Thanksgiving after this? <laughs> Kind of have to. Don't get whooped by a five year old show, but I don't give a fuck if you're 78. If the kid is five, you got to do work on that. Five? They don't know enough to. Yeah. She didn't know the eye pluck or to kick him in the nut or just. Like... Fuck the kid out the fucking room. She was they don't care how strong the kid is, bitch. Turn this fucking kid around because I bet you if it was a dog or something like that, you would have been fighting for your life. You weren't going to just go down, Becky. For well, all okay? we know, this yeah. one is like, like he can start be, heaving and shit like he could be know, a box of prodigy. Chop by Chuck right? Norris. Like you might have super fast hands. Like, Hold on. I, don't, I don't I don't care. Come on, bro. Listen, he's five. five. Let's realize what five year old. That's not even first grade. That's still. The five like, kindergarten. He just learned how to use the bathroom on his own a couple weeks ago, probably. He might still be wearing pull-ups. <laughs> you dig? Look on dogs. That. It's special needs and shit hey, like that. Like, come smashed, on, bitch. He smashed that bitch in the head with a he, Thomas She the couldn't get out the room. She couldn't get out the room from a fucking five-year-old. That's like a leprechaun chasing you around a fucking room. I wonder if there's video of this. I would love to see I the video. I would love to see it. Wait, is there a video that exists? I that, I'm gonna, no, it, it, it does not exist. And I'm, I'm sure if it did, go. listen, I want to know who this kid is. I think we need, I think He's everybody in America, hero. everybody in America needs to know what this right kid's now. name is. Listen. But we need to know his name, know what he looked like, because I need to see, this little motherfucker must have been cock diesel. Because 15 years from now, <laughs> he can be on your block, whooping your ass. You know what I mean? This kid is five. He's and he five. already... He so already imagine, dusted off a grown imagine woman. Imagine when he's 15. What, is this, what does this chick look like? I want to see what she looks like. I don't have a picture of her, but... Oh, her fragile little ass. Five-year-old kids is whooping the hell out of grown folks now, but not in my... And listen, when I came up, every woman on my street could give me a whooping. I couldn't even look... That? I couldn't even look crazy at them. Like, if I even looked like, they, I was getting a whooping. I was getting one outside, and I was getting one when I get home. Fuck the talk about. Shit out here crazy. And my mom used to be a school teacher. And I, used, to, and I used to threaten kids. And I was threatening kids right now. My mama, she's a little bit older right now. One of you five-year-olds touch my mama, I'm going to fuck you all the way up. That's what I'm going to say. I'm all right. Saying. And I got to say this. Parents, I mean, I know it's supposed to be against the law, but beat your fucking kids. Beat him. Nah, man. And this, and this Listen. Case, I take the kid's side, fam. If that kid could whoop that teacher ass, I hope, you know what I mean? His parents is all right in the household. Man, like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope they all right. I don't want cauliflower, mom. <laughs> I think somebody put, I think they put bath sauce in this juice box. Something <laughs> happened. Um, he was on steroids. What's the next thing, Mikey? Pete Rock goes at Diddy. Mikey, do you know who Pete Rock is? I do now. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, so this story, I think I can read this. All right, so listen, this goes back to Diddy being on the BET Awards, right? We late. What's wrong with Pete Rock? Is doing, man? Yeah, right. It's a lot going on with Pete Rock. So what happened was Diddy went on stage, and he said, hey, "Get up for Bobby Brown, y'all. Yeah, come on. Hey, yo, he was the first chocolate boy wonder." Diddy went on stage, and he was he was saying Bobby Brown was the first Chocolate Boy Wonder. And Diddy was trying to say, I'm Chocolate Boy Wonder, but let me give props to Bobby Brown who was the first Chocolate Boy Wonder. Now, for some reason, Pete Rock sees this. And he goes, I think on Instagram, erasure is a real thing is what he's saying. We doing this to each other now? You know better than this. Knock it off. You are from 77 Dell Ave, Mount Vernon, New York. I know everything about you, but I wouldn't call myself Puff Daddy when I'm the real chocolate boy wonder boss, you kind of came out of nowhere. Been in Mount Vernon since the first grade, all the way to graduating high school. I came up with the town. This is what Pete Rock is saying. He goes on to say, my brother grabbed lover, taught you dance steps in your garage on Dale Ave. Talking to Diddy right now. I touch drum machines and make the beats for real. I make the beats for real. Is what he's saying to Diddy. You cannot erase what I have done in music or try to take my name. Everyone in hip hop knows who the Chocolate Boy Wonder is. You what? brought Biggie. You brought Biggie to the basement only to diss me later and not use me on any of his projects. You cut me out the One More Chance video when Big himself invited me. 
You got to where you want it to then be shitted on. I don't know what that means. Oh, you got to where you need to get to, and then you shit it, basically. Thank, right. Okay, so P. Diddy jumps out the window on the Boy Wonder comment, the Chocolate Boy Wonder comment, and Diddy goes and brings up all this other shit. It sounds like they got more issues than just him calling himself the Chocolate Boy Wonder. He said, listen, I make beats for real. You cut me out the One More Chance video. Somebody talk to me about what's going on with just let's just start with Diddy and Pete Rock. Anybody that sound like an ex? Pete Rock sound like an ex I got. She talked just like that. Like, yo, you don't never, you know what I mean? Like Pete Rock just sound like a swarm lover. I hope he's not. Nah, nah, nah. nah we ain't gonna, I want him to know we, he's we, we ain't gonna do that to Pete Rock. That's my homie. And uh, Pete, Pete been doing shit like this. It, it, it's not just this Diddy situation. He's been doing some weird things. That's why, like I said, I don't not my homie guy. Oh, nah, he's good. Respect to Pete Rock, but you know I like the show to be spicy. So if y'all niggas gonna fight about this shit, then fight about the shit. But what is it? Do say <laughs> Do say Let us burn. Let's start. This is organic. <laughs> God damn it, uh, French. What's going on with your boy? Listen, I mean, go some type of way because everybody in hip hop does know if anybody in the hip hop or music is the chocolate boy wonder, it's motherfucking Pete Rock. Let's just keep it a hundred. Keep it a buck. I never knew that. I didn't know Diddy was the chocolate. I didn't know anybody was chocolate. Boy. Somebody in the somebody, Rock, listen. listen. You can go back to uh, what's the first album? P Rock CL Beck and the Soul Brother. And yeah, with CL listen, Smooth. Just listen to that. And several different times in that record, he calls himself "I'm the Chocolate Boy Wonder." Yep. And okay. this is and this is before all that shit. This is before. Somebody in the comment yeah, section said that he CL also. Smooth. Somebody in the comment section said he also called himself soul, uh, soul Brother Number One. Soul which, Brother Number One. But that's James Brown. Right. So somebody in the comment section said, nigga, you biting off of James Brown. Oh. As, I mean, that's a point, but. Listen, didn't yeah. Pete Rock want to turn around? Yeah, niggas is just picking and choosing what they want to be mad about these days. So, you know True what I'm that. saying? Now, he yeah. did. And, and listen, he's suing Nas because he didn't get the royalties. From, um, from the Illmatic album, whose world is this? He's old millions. So what's going on with Nas? Pete Rock. If if that album is from like ninety three, ninety four, why would that be a Nas thing? That would have been a later thing. Because I, I was just about to ask, does Nas have rights to that album? That was my first. I think, question. I think Nas got his masters recently since he's been free. So, that would be a new thing that if he just got, if he, that's what, because that's what I want to know. Because if he just got the rights to his masters, did, was he even involved in putting the splits together in the first place? Or was that no, the label? Like, where's, the, where's the contracts? What is, what do the contracts say? Right. You know I'm saying, because none, none, of, none of the people involved are like new to the game. Everything I'm sure had a contract that said exactly what everybody was supposed to get. Which is again why that sounds salty because that's what thirty plus years almost. Whereas that's a, it. Say it might be something fresh that came up, but look, I'm going to tell you right now. One of the reasons I've been so turned off with hip hop is that there's people out there right now that I thought were just fine with money that I'm watching sell out right now. So I don't know if people are going through hard times, so they really just going for everything that they can right now. You feel like naming names today? Um. She named names. You want me to? Yes. I don't know if you want me to name all the names, but... Only all of them. I mean, I got... I myself got thrown under the bus for some chump change for just a couple grand. People that were supposed to be real close to me. Um, you know, I'm watching... I'm, the, my biggest thing right now is the, the whole uh, slaughterhouse situation. That was a heartbreaker for me because... That looked like a money grab, if you ask me. I was low key waiting for the jig to be up and there'd be a slaughterhouse tour. But nah, that's some real shit. And I seen some real pain coming from Royce's side. So that hurt me to see. Um, you know, I'm supposed to Here's be the funny thing about the slaughterhouse thing. I got thrown under the bus by somebody who sold me out for a couple fucking grand. So. And I can't fully speak on some of it either because there's, you know, I'm doing my thing. This ain't no street shit either. This is some legal shit. So I'm handling it. The, the mine, slaughterhouse but. thing, here's the funny thing. Why do motherfuckers be arguing so much and niggas put on a reunion this, a reunion that? 
Yeah, the time has passed. Nobody checking for the shit no more. I'm gonna say it, nigga. It's nah, power. ain't no reunion. Powers. They broke Powers up. Powers said it. No, nobody's even. And I'm a Joel. I'm a Joel Ortiz fan. Listen, listen. Nobody checking. Quit talking about. Quit talking. Slaughterhouse members. Let's do this. Let's quit talking slaughterhouse. You nobody give a fuck. Respectfully. That's, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Then you realize it was like Crook and Joel coming out saying that they broke up and. I'm they had, that whole little, they that had whole white style. boys burning fucking slaughterhouse merchandise in the video. Oh, I saw that. I saw all that. Right. Like, look, like, so and, now ain't, ain't no reunion, clearly. They've made could, it very you clear. Down, you could, you could walk down each one of these dudes' blocks and nobody could tell you as much information about that shit as I just said. Which is like, just repeating what you said. Does shit get burned up in the video? Does anybody give a... Show of hands, who gives a fuck? You can fuck about slaughterhouse? Yeah, Dude, I'm a huge. You want them to get back fan. together? Huge. I'm. I'm. I've always been right. a slaughterhouse fan. So, because we I did a whole about, slaughterhouse tribute set. Bomb. We we was talking about dudes being salty and not having the bread, and then there's some people who figure out new ways to make money, and it'd be like, oh, well, you lit. Maybe we should all get back together and get lit. And it don't always work out like that. I respect so, those so guys. So that situation seemed like a money grab. So with the, to me, the Pete Rock situation, that has to, for me, it all has to go back to how long has Nas even had the rights to his own shit. And once you have, and, and this is something that I don't know that maybe, you know, French or Deuce, maybe you can answer for me, but once splits are put in place by a label or whoever, and then you get your rights back, can you even go in and adjust all of that? Or would you have to take the album down and re-release it with new splits and everything? How would that even work? No, the it was the first album. Easy, it was it was it was Columbia Records, right? First album. Columbia. I don't know that he owns those masters or whatever. So maybe That's you what, know. what we're saying is, and and this is what makes it salty coming from Pete. Then, is if Nas recently got his masters back, which I know that that's something that he's been like working towards. If he recently got his masters back, and Pete is suing Nas. For the millions of dollars, after all these years that he should have fucking sued Columbia, it's I don't like that shit. This whole thing stinks to high heaven. Like, why sue? Why sue the black man who just got ownership of his shit, and you had twenty years? Because it's not like he just now didn't get paid, and has been missing out on millions. Right. He says he says in a quote. Nas been basically ducking me on this since '94. He says Nas. That's what he says. Nas. So I don't know. You we. People, Mike, it could be the label. No, here's the thing though. 100%. If I'm Nas signed to Columbia and Pete Rock calls me the first time, I'm like, talk to Columbia. If you keep calling me, I don't have nothing to say to you because I can't go to Col It's your job to call Columbia and get paid. I, just because I'm Nas, and you, you know what I mean? It's not like that means that we're friends or business partners. We did our agreement. He probably took cash up front for the beat. And then was supposed to get his royalties. And who knows if he even anticipated that Illmatic would go on to make a lot of money because it didn't. No, I, I mean, nobody ever really anticipates that kind of shit. And when it when it comes down to it, you know how this whole system works. I mean, that's even assuming Columbia paid Pete Rock any money to for any beats. You know how this shit is. Producers get shafted just as bad as, you know, most other people in the background. So get shafted. Mikey, what's next though? Pause. <laughs> Disco was a disposable yeah. one. Was New Jack Swing yeah. also disposable? Are you scared to use your voice today? I just don't know how loud I am. Is it because your dick is peeling? <laughs> yes. Fuck. <laughs> a valid excuse if you ask me. Moisturizing. This is this is why Beans is on the show, but I can't never take her out nowhere. What the fuck was popping is your boy Mike Powers? Uh, 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 the intro came.